It's really my great honor to have this opportunity to share our experience on allowing MariaDB to benefit from the emerging computational storage drive. We know that as CMOS technology scaling is reaching to its limit, the computing infrastructure is transitioning from the traditional CPU-only homogeneous computing towards domain-specific heterogeneous computing, where certain computation tasks migrate from CPU to other computing engines, including the standalone uh, uh, PCIe accelerators, smart network card, and uh, also the lately the computational storage drive. Altogether, they complement with the CPU to form a truly heterogeneous computing infrastructure. The basic concept behind the computational storage is very simple. We, we make each storage drive be capable of performing certain computations on the I.O. data paths. This will form a highly distributed heterogeneous computing infrastructure that can maximize the computation parallelism with the minimal extra data movement and the latency overhead. Our company Skillflux has been leading the wave of computational storage uh, drive, and we are the first to launch the computational storage drive into the commercial product. And our current product, which is a special class of computational storage drive with built-in transparent compression, has become GA and is being deployed worldwide, mainly in the database, um, database application domain. So actually recognizing this grand trend of computational storage, the storage industry uh, the Storage Industry Association, SNEAR, has commissioned a working group in charge of its standardization, where Skillflux is a founding member. In the heterogeneous computing landscape, regarding the commercialization of computational storage, data pass transparent compression apparently is the first low-hanging fruit to pick. Uh, its basic idea is very simple. Compression is done in hardware on the I.O. pass, completely transparent to the OS and the user application. Our current product uses a single FPGA to handle both flash control and the per 4K byte Zlib compression. And we implement the flash translation layer in a kernel space driver that expose the storage drive as a, stand as a standard uh, block device to the Linux block layer. This cartoon further illustrates its difference from the current practice. On the left-hand side is the current practice where we use either FPGA or accelerator to handle data compression and deploy normal SSD. On the right-hand side, uh, it, it is a, trans, a computational storage drive with data pass transparent compression. Here, a single FPGA integrated function of the flash control and the compression. And so by combining the functions, uh, all these functions into a single chip, this drive can fill up the host CPU cycles and minimize the data movement and enables the compression throughput to scale with the storage capacity. So this figure um, compares the compression ratio between our drive and the other popular CPU-based compression libraries like uh, Zlib, Zstandard, and LZ4. We use uh, uh, Canterbury Corpus files as a test bench, and each compression uh, chunk size is 8 kilobytes. Because of the storage drive, uh, the 4K byte sector size, the compressed results are 4K byte aligned for all the CPU compression libraries. The results clearly show the high compression efficiency achieved by our hardware-based compression. Now let's see how MariaDB um, performs when running on the drive with built-in transparent compression. Uh, here, we run five different Sysbench workloads on both our drive and a competing uh, normal high-end NVMe drive. 
even though C-SPAN generates data with relatively low um, data compressibility, our drive can still transparently compress the 2 terabyte raw data set with about 1 terabyte, representing 50% of physical storage cost reduction. And this figure compares the TPS of the 5 C-SPAN workload under 64 clients thread. Clearly, the drive with built-in transparent compression consistently outperforms the normal NVMe, uh, NVMe drive under all the workloads. This, sim this is mainly because the, by transparently compressing each page through the hardware engine on the I.O. pass inside the storage drive, it not only reduces the physical storage cost, but, mean but also meanwhile reduces the NAND flash memory chip access contention among all the concurrent I.O. requests. This directly leads to higher InnoDB I.O. performance. So under high concurrency, like a 64 client threads, this further translates into a higher TPS performance. So basically, we can simultaneously gain the storage cost reduction and the TPS performance improvement. Beyond such straightforward usage, we can go one step further to make MariaDB take advantage of the atomic write feature of our drive. So our drive natively ensure that, uh, uh, ensures the write atomicity for each individual write I.O. request from the Linux block layer. Therefore, if uh, each 16 kilobyte InnoDB page can be entirely sealed in one block layer write, write I.O. request, we can guarantee the atomic write for, an, for InnoDB and therefore safely disable the double write buffer. So to, to guarantee each 16K byte uh, InnoDB page entirely stay in one write I.O. request, we can first ensure each 16K byte page spans over consecutive or continuous LBA sectors by appropriately configuring the file system, for example, you know, using the big analog patch on ext4 file system, and then combines with the direct I.O. This can guarantee each 16 kilobyte InnoDB page entirely forced into one write I.O. request without demanding any changes to the existing I.O. stack. So accordingly, we can leverage the atomic write feature of our drive to safely disable the InnoDB double write buffer. So actually, the latest MariaDB uh, 10.5 already has built-in support to allow users conveniently, um, conveniently use our SkillFlex drive's atomic write feature. The result here shows the performance benefits in terms of both TPS and the 99 percentile of tail latency. So here, the, the gray bar represents the case of using normal NVMe, um, NVMe SSD. The middle purple bar represents the case of using our drive with double write buffer still on. And the orange bar represents the case of using our drive with double write buffer turned off, enabled by the atomic write feature. The results clearly show the write intensive workload can significantly benefit from, um, from our atomic write feature. We can double or even triple the TPS um, performance and meanwhile reduce the 99 percentile latency uh, by over 60 percent. Uh, all these performance benefits come together with uh, a 50 percent lower storage cost. So as mentioned earlier, the Sysbench data set has relatively low data compression ratio by of only 2 to 1. So um, many of our data, database customers report higher or even much higher data compression ratio, like a 3 to 1 and 5 to 1 on their real data set. The higher data compression ratio is, the better customers can leverage our drive to improve the performance and meanwhile reduce the storage cost. So our drive operates as a standard block device in Linux 
and all these benefits come transparently without changing a single line of code um, in MariaDB and, uh, and also without changing the existing I.O. stack. So it's very simple, like it's just a plug and a play. So beyond this atomic write feature, we can go one step, one more step to rethink the implementation of InnoDB redo lock upon the arrival of a computational storage drive with built-in transparent compression. We know that redo lock is a very critical component in database. And in current practice, once we write one transaction uh, into the in-memory redo log uh, buffer and commit the transaction, the entire 4K byte block will be flashed from the redo log buffer to one 4K byte sector on storage. And after the compression, uh, transparent compression in our drive, the compressed data block will be stored in that flash memory. And later on, once we write another transaction into the in-memory redo log buffer and commit the transaction, the 4K byte block consisting of both current transaction and the previous transaction will be flashed to the same 4K byte sector on storage. Then the compressed data block is stored in that flash memory. In the same way, upon committing the third transaction, we will rewrite the same 4K byte sector again and store the compressed data block. As transactions keep accumulating in the redo log buffer, and accordingly we keep uh, writing updated uh, redo log buffer to the same 4K byte sector, the same transaction data are compressed and written to um, NAND flash memory multiple times. In this example, the same transaction one data are compressed and are flashed to NAND flash memory by three times. So this directly leads to the write amplification. A larger write amplification uh, clearly causes more interference with other uh, I/O requests, and more importantly, it will shorter uh, will shorten the NAND flash memory lifetime. This is a, will become particularly in critical for the emerging upcoming QLC NAND flash memory. So to reduce and even eliminate the write amplification caused by redo log, we propose a sparse redo log data structure. The basic idea is very simple. Instead of uh, tightly accumulating transactions into redo log as in pr current practice, we always allocate a new 4K byte uh, sector after each transaction commit. For example, uh, when committing the first transaction, we flash the data to the storage. Inside the storage drive, the 4K byte sector is compressed and stored to NAND flash memory, just like in current practice. However, right after committing the first transaction, we put the next transaction in a new 4K byte space and flash it to a new 4K byte sector on the, on the storage drive. So in the same way, for the third transaction, we put it in another uh, 4K byte space and flash it to another new 4K byte sector on the storage drive. Clearly, we waste a lot of uh, logical storage space by not tightly accumulating data transactions in redo log. Um, by underutilizing the logical storage space, we eliminate the redo log write amplification. And this can help to improve the overall system storage I/O performance, and more importantly, to improve the NAND flash memory lifetime. So, for the purpose of illustration, this figure shows the write volume reduction um, by replacing the conventional redo log with our proposed sparse redo log. Um, here, we assume that right after each transaction is written to the redo log buffer, we immediately commit and flash to the storage. The horizontal axis is the size of each transaction, ranging from 128 bytes uh, per transaction to 2 kilobytes per transaction. The, so the result shows that the smaller of each transaction is, 
the more we can reduce the redo log write volume. With a 128 byte per transaction, the proposed sparse run redo log can reduce the write volume by over 90%. And so that is this is clearly shows the benefit of this uh, uh, sparse redo log. To further leverage the transparent compression, another idea is to modify the, the InnoDB by deploying the dual, dual in-memory versus on-storage page format. The basic idea, again, is very simple. When a page stays in the buffer pool, we, it keeps the existing conventional raw-based format. When, being, when flashing a page to the storage, we convert it to a column-based format and transform each column to improve the data compressibility so that it can be much better compressed by the computational storage drive with built-in transparent compression. And the raw column page format conversion is handled by the InnoDB background I.O. thread, completely transparent to the other modules in MarrowDB. So for the purpose of demonstration, we incorporated into InnoDB uh, by only adding 600 lines of code. And uh, uh, our suspense-based benchmarking result shows that the proposed dual-mode page format can further reduce the InnoDB storage cost by 50%, and the uh, on-the-fly page format conversion only incurs a few percentage of TPS loss. So this simple idea can provide a very nice option for users to take better advantage of transparent compression. So in conclusion, we show that MarrowDB can significantly benefit from the emerging computational storage drive with built-in transparent compression and atomic write to simultaneously improve the performance and reduce storage cost and without changing a single line of code. Moreover, by, by slightly changing the source code to incorporate the sparse redo log and the dual mode page format, MarrowDB can take even much better advantage of a computational storage drive. So at Skillflux, we sincerely look forward to best serving the MarrowDB users with our, uh, with our computational storage drive. Um, and also, we look forward to working together with the MarrowDB community to further explore how MarrowDB can take full advantage of such a new storage hardware. So this ends my talk. Thank you very much. Thank <music> you.